Welcome back to another one of my shitty vlogs. In this shitty vlog, I'm going to update you with the uh, new course that I'm planning, which is an MVVM introduction using uh, all the new stuff. So Jetpack Compose, Hilt for Dependency Injection, Navigation Component, uh, Single Activity Architecture, Kotlin, obviously. And there's, there's more stuff too, but I'm gonna just kind of shortcut the list here. But essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to rebuild a couple of my kind of best performing courses out there that were written with Java. I think they were written with, written with Java anyway. Maybe they were Kotlin, but either way, I don't remember. Doesn't matter. I'm trying to rebuild them with the newest kind of stuff out there. And it was my MVVM introduction, which I made last year, quite early in the year, 2019, and my database caching course, which also I made quite early in the year in 2019. Maybe you remember them. They were quite popular. They're still actually quite popular. They use the network bound resource class, which is kind of that old, that well, I mean, I'm going to call it old now, but it's really not that old. It's only about a year old. It was part of the uh, Google samples, the Google architecture components samples. They use this network bound resource class, which was an abstract class. And you, you sort of did all of your network operations in there with live data, mediator, live data, things like that. But since Kotlin, coroutines, um, suspend functions really is the big thing that it's just it's just an inferior way to do these operations do caching operations database operations because having live data in your repository is generally just not a good idea having to attach an observer to have something emitted from your repository uh, is it works sometimes but sometimes it it causes problems or it causes difficulties and it's really all kind of a, a, around this observer issue you have to attach an observer to get a result with suspend functions you can use coroutine scopes and essentially that sort of takes the place of the obser observer you can just you know fire off a request on some coroutine scope and get a result and do something with it you don't have to attach that observer so anyway yeah long story short a lot of stuff's changed a lot of stuff has improved sort of drastically i think the android team is doing a great job so i want to make a new course and redo those sort of really, really um, well-performing courses that show you a lot of really fundamental skills. And I'm just going to read straight off my list here. So again, Kotlin, MVVM is the architecture. I'm, I'm using MVVM instead of MVI, even though MVI is technically my favorite. I'm using MVVM because uh, most of like the job, well, oh, hold on, let me stop and, and explain myself a little better. So number one is Generally, I do what I think is best, and I don't always listen to the to the audience. So it's pretty clear that the audience, my audience, wants MVVM stuff, but I haven't really listened to them because I just think MVI is better. I think if you want to do MVVM, it's basically the same. MVI is just literally better. The reason I'm choosing to do MVVM in these courses is because somebody brought up a really good point to me. Um, he he was applying for doing Android interviews. He's going through the kind of the interviewing process, and he said, "Mitch, uh, you know, I know MVI is better. I like MVI better." And, and and he said that to me. But he also said most of the Android interviews, when you go to them, they ask for MVVM, so it's really hard to. Um, it just doesn't help. It's not that helpful to know MVI really well when the interview questions are all asking for MVVM. So I thought, oh, that's a good point. And, you know, I, I, I don't really need to do MVI. I think it's better, but MVVM is fine. And if it's going to help more people and logistically it makes more sense for them to use MVVM because of their interviews, then, you know what, fine. Let's, I'll do these next couple courses in MVVM anyway. Okay, so Kotlin, MVVM, Jetpack Compose, obviously, which drastically changes the way you build your UIs moving forward. Uh, we have uh, Compose Animation. So this is obviously a big thing with Compose. One of the major reasons people are going to be moving to Compose is because it makes it easier to make your UIs beautiful, make nice animations. So of course, I'm going to show you kind of like an introduction to animations, but not going to be spending a ton of time on animations. And I'm going to come back to animations in a few minutes when I get through this list. Uh, flow and state flow. So this is how you're emitting data from your view model layer. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, suspend functions in our repository. I'm not going to be using use cases because this is like a, you know, beginner course. So I want to make it really simple. I'm just going to have a single repository with suspend functions uh, and maybe probably not even emit flows. I'll probably just do suspend functions and use state flow in the view model, which if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we're going to talk about it. Uh, Hilt for dependency injection because it is so much easier than Dagger. If you don't know anything about dependency injection, Hilt is just so, so easy. So don't even worry about it. Navigation components, retrofit two for the network operations, and we are not going to be doing caching. So it's only going to be a single 
uh, a single, I guess, uh, data source in your repository, and that's going to be the network layer. Uh, single activity architecture, so we're going to use fragments. And Jetpack Compose, the people working on Jetpack Compose made it super easy. They made the interoperability of Jetpack Compose really awesome. So you can literally just inflate a composable inside of a fragment and make that single fragment use Compose. You don't have to like rewrite your entire app, which is a really, really good thing, I think. Because if you think about, you know, the practicality of like, development teams or companies moving over to compose if the interoperability isn't good they're not going to do it because it would require them to rewrite everything but the way compose is built or one of the features of compose is you can literally just rewrite like one fragment you can take one fragment inflate a composable and just change that one to use compose so that's that's a really powerful thing i think that's a big factor in like whether or not people will adopt compose because it's simple to like slowly convert kind of piece by piece so we'll be using fragments because I think that's the best way to start using Compose. The interoperability is good. Like I said, uh, we'll be doing uh, app themes. So how to use, how to do theming in Compose, how to like toggle different theme settings at the, like the top level of the application. Uh, that means changing from like dark theme to light theme, things like that with a single press of a button. Uh, custom fonts. So we're we'll doing some custom fonts, light and dark theme, which I just said, and probably way more stuff, but I'm just going to cut the list there. And again, this is going to be an introduction course. It might seem like the things I just talked about were not sort of beginner level, but they, they really are. I think anybody who has, you know, people with very limited Android experience will be able to get through this. And if you are, you know, that expert level or, uh, you know, you're, you've been working in the industry for a long time, I think you're still going to get something out of this because, of course, this is all kind of new stuff. So inevitably, there's lots to learn no matter what skill level level you're at here. So uh, so that's my plan for the next course. And I've got the code mostly finished by now. Uh, so I will, I'm going to take you through a demo of what it looks like now. And it's not like written in stone, but it's probably about 90% what it's going to look like now. And then I want to talk about what I'm going to be doing after this course. So this is the MVVM introduction, no database caching. Uh, and then I'm going to be doing another course after that, which will include database caching and a bunch of other stuff. So I'll talk about that right after we quickly go through a demo. Okay, so let's uh, launch the app. And what I want you to pay attention to when I launch the app is the animations. There's not a lot of them, but here, there's that first one right there. So that, that nice loading animation. And Facebook does this and many, many apps do this. I'm actually gonna relaunch it here so you can see it again. So if I go and search for that MVVM introduction, launch it again, notice that nice loading animation. This is called a shimmer, which I copied from somebody who very nicely uh, kind of built this for me. And I'm going to talk about, I'll, I'll reference him I'll, or I'll give him a shout out after I get through the demo, but I really, really love that, that loading animation. If you click on another category up at the top, so I'm clicking on these chips up here. If I click on them, that loading animation shows again. I think it, I think it looks really nice. So now let's go through the kind of the, the features of this. So if I go up to the top, of course, there is a search feature. So if I search for like uh, chicken, oh, I guess I should explain first, this is a food recipe app. So just like with my old MVVM course, my old database caching course, we're gonna be using the food to fork API. And some of you might be thinking, well, Mitch, food to fork doesn't exist anymore. Well, guess what? I rebuilt it. I a friend of mine, Simran, shout out to Simran. Thank you very much. I owe you a lot for, for borrowing this data. He took the data from foodtofork.com. I think it was foodtofork.com and he extracted it for us. And I now published it on foodtofork.ca. So if you go to foodtofork.ca, there's kind of a description of how to use the endpoints. And uh, I'll actually give you a, an example because you're going to have to use Postman to use it. Uh, so I'll open up Postman here. Let me just bring it over on the screen. So here's Postman open and I have kind of a, an example URL. This is the same example URL that is right here. I'll actually just copy this one. Go to here. I have a get request. I've pasted it in food to fork.ca API recipe search. Uh, let's do page number one. And my query is beef, carrot, potato, and onion. So it's going to find recipes with beef or carrot or potato or onion. That is how the query system works. And you, to get this to work, you need to attach an authentication token. Uh, I just have one authentication token in on the server right now. So you don't have to register or anything. You can just copy this authentication token. It's in the documentation too. So you can see here, authorization, you know, there's the token. And if we click send, it is going to access the REST API on the website. And here you can see there's, there's my response. It's a whole bunch of recipes with their ingredients. 
So that is what the this this app is using. It's a it's a server that I put up to copy what Food to Fork used to be, and I think there's about three thousand recipes on it. So anyway, that's uh, that's searching, and of course I added these kind of chips at the top here, which I already showed you, just kind of like quick references to search to like common categories. So there is uh, there's our recipes. So now if I click on you know one of these recipes, it takes me to another view, and notice that loading animation again. So let me go back and I'll show it to you again. So again, we have that kind of shimmer loading animation. So if I click this, it shows the image kind of shimmering, and then like a fake sort of recipes list that is shimmering. You have the title, you have the uh, the updated or the timestamp, and then you have the list of ingredients down here, and you have that little score there, which is uh, like a score of one to zero to a hundred of you know how people like this recipe. So there's no way to like vote on this or anything. It's just kind of like a, a little feature that's part of the, the website. So generally that's it other than being able to toggle to light and dark themes. So like I said, by, with one click of a button, you'll be able to toggle from, to, uh, from light to dark theme or dark to light theme. Oh, it looks like I need to fix that. The text is not showing up there. So like I said, it's about 90% done, but generally speaking, this is, this is it. This will be the course uh, that I teach you, or the app that I teach you how to build in the course. So now what's gonna be after this course? So after this one, uh, well actually let's talk about when I think I'll be done publishing it first. So like I said, the code's pretty much done. I'm probably gonna spend some more time just playing around with animations because I, I really don't like understand Jetpack Compose animations very well yet. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time playing with that. See if I maybe wanna add some more little animations to the app, basically just like little fine tuning stuff. But the architecture is set up, the bulk of the, the build is set up. So you could probably expect to see lectures in two weeks. I'm gonna spend, I'm guessing about a week planning lectures and then I'll start, start filming them and I'll probably publish them as I film them. So like, you know, it's pretty common for me to film five to maybe eight lectures a day and get those published. So that's what you'll probably see. I'm guessing, again, like I said, I'm gonna take the upper bound of the time and say maybe two weeks. So in two weeks, I would say you can expect to see lectures. And this course is going to be a free one. Since it is a beginner course, there's a lot of uh, sort of really beginner level topics here. I'm gonna be going really slow through it because it's a beginner course. I'll put it for free on YouTube. And, uh, and this is meant to be kind of a prerequisite for the course that comes after this one. So now let's talk about that course. So when I've done this one, I'm gonna build sort of, uh, basically I'm gonna build onto this, this project. I'm gonna build uh, out the caching layer so that you, you follow kind of all the best practices for caching. Uh, you know, the single source of truth principle kind of being the, the core component of that. So we'll be, yeah, basically just adding onto this and adding more advanced things. I'm gonna be adding uh, more, more layers to the architecture, so I'll probably use clean architecture and we'll be using use cases. We'll still use MVVM because I know you guys, you just wanna see MVVM, that's fine. I will build out the, the kind of backend uh, clean architecture setup. And because we have that clean architecture set up with use cases, I'll probably also add some unit tests. Unit tests are, or sorry, Use cases, I think, in my opinion, are the most important thing to unit test because they, they really simulate what that exact functionality is gonna be like in your real app. So uh, building out the backend with clean architecture, building use cases, and then doing some unit tests, I think is a really uh, valuable skill. And if you think about the interview process, most interviews go like this. They say, okay, let's do some, some stupid little quiz, you know, fizz buzz thing, and just to see if you know how to code. If you pass that, which everybody does, you go to the next the next kind of step where either you take home a home project or they ask you to build out uh, some like basic architecture. That is kind of the the most common thing that an interview will ask you. And either whether you're taking home the the home test or you're doing the test with them usually it's it's all around it's all about architecture they'll say like you know set up a screen uh, put some variables and some fields in that screen uh, set up your view model use mvvm set up a basic repository and then write some like e simple some simple um some simple tests some simple unit tests so this this will kind of outline those things that that they typically ask you in the interview they'll set up the basic architecture uh you know how to set up your use cases and then how to test those use cases that will give you a, kind of a really really 
clean interview process, I think anyway. And that course is gonna be paid. So the first one's gonna be free. Like I said, this MVVM sort of introduction with all the new stuff, uh, you can expect to see lectures within two weeks. And then after that, I'm gonna start working on the database caching one with use cases and some unit testing. And that one will be a paid course. So now before I go, let's give a shout out to the guy who is doing some really amazing things with Jetpack Compose. The That shimmer animation that I showed you in the demo, he came up with that. I didn't come up with that. I've just been kind of playing around with it. So let me let me show you him on Twitter because I think he's really great and I'm probably going to have him on a podcast in, I don't know, next week or the week after or something like that. He's a he's an Android developer. He lives in Singapore, I believe. And uh, yeah, well, you'll learn more about him in the podcast. So let's go take a look at his GitHub and take a look at his Twitter. So here's his Twitter. I think his name is Gurupreet. I've, I think a pretty common Indian name is Gurpreet, but that doesn't look like Gurpreet. It looks like Gurupreet. I don't, anyway, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is the guy underscore Gurupreet at, uh, on Twitter. He's doing some really great stuff with Compose. He's got the best sort of Compose samples that I've seen so far, other than the Jetpack Compose samples that Google has built. So make sure to follow him and uh, check out the podcast when I have him on. And if you want to see his GitHub repository with all of those Jetpack Compose samples, this is it right here, Compose Cookbook. I will put a link down below, hopefully if I remember when I publish this video, and you can go check that out. So if you scroll down, you know, he's got all kinds of different demos, uh, lists, widgets, animations, different UIs that he's tried to kind of copy and build, just like really cool stuff. And there you can see there's that shimmer animation that I copied in his advanced lists and animations kind of section. So check out his repository. I definitely uh, think it's super valuable to have something like this exist. And I will be I will be interviewing him, like I said, in a couple of weeks, hopefully. So so if you are interested in the MVVM introduction course, which is coming up pretty soon, make sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel if you aren't already subscribed, although I think most of you probably are. And you can probably a good the best way to get notified for this course is create an account on my website. It's free. And click the uh, checkbox it says get emails that way i you know i send out emails whenever i have kind of a new thing coming out so that way you'll get an email don't worry i don't spam you i probably send an email out once every i don't know two weeks maybe three weeks i don't i don't send that out that many so create an account there you'll get emails you get notified when that course is ready and one last thing before i go in my last video or my last vlog that i did i asked you guys for engagement at the end of the video i said you know just go down to the comments and just write engagement or mitch here's your engagement you guys did such a good job of that i was really impressed it was kind of incredible probably you know there's hundreds of comments that says say say engagement down there so uh do that again i love that i thought it was hilarious uh one guy actually said what do you say uh what do you say mitch um here is your engagement where should i put it or something anyway i just thought it was really funny so go down there write some kind of funny engagement thing and uh thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one